Hey everyone, Kelly here, Cancer and Lymphedema Physical Therapist. I am back again today with another video on Cancer Myths. To see the last videos in a playlist, go ahead and check up here and be sure to subscribe to see when more videos related to this come out. If you have any other myths that you want to hear about in future videos, be sure to comment those down below. But today in this video, we're going to go through four different myths related to what can cause or grow cancer and we're going to explain what is true and debunk what is not. The concern here from most is that mobile networks use radio frequency electromagnetic radiation to transmit and receive information. It is noted though that these radio waves are very weak and are non-ionizing which means they don't have enough energy to damage DNA and therefore do not directly cause cancer. Even with 4G and 5G networks, they do have a higher frequency of wave compared to older networks, but it's still not enough energy to damage the DNA. That being said, research is still continuing to look at the potential long-term side effects. Some cell phone manufacturers do recommend keeping the cell phone away from the body when you're not using it. There is no scientific evidence to show that there is a correlation with this one, but it is something that they need to keep looking at long-term. The FDA does also recommend to use a landline whenever possible and to use a hands-free technology such as a headset to place more distance between the cell phone and someone. And related to this, because the cell phone is usually up by the head, research has been done looking at incidents related to brain cancer and central nervous system cancer in adults and also in pediatrics or children. They've looked at data over the last few decades, so before cell phones were even used, comparing to the data now when cell phones are widely used. And all of the numbers and incidents of brain cancer and central nervous system cancer have been stable the entire time. They suggest because of this that there is no correlation or uptick in these cancers due to the increased use in cell phones. And to clarify, the most consistent health advisory for cell phones is for distracted driving and car accidents. Ingredients and chemicals used in consumer products, including cosmetics, have really come under fire recently for their possible effects on human health as well as the environment. Every country has their own safety regulations on what they can use in makeup and cosmetics. Some substances and chemicals are completely banned, while others are limited to small amounts only. In the United States, the FDA does not fully regulate cosmetics though. The unfortunate part is that all of these products are tested with such small amounts of chemicals that it's really unknown what these chemicals can do at larger quantities or with higher exposures. But if you think about it and they test every single product and every single ingredient within each product and try to figure out what is harmful, it's just really challenging to do and then it's really challenging to decipher which ones increase the risk of cancer. So as of right now, we don't have a lot of evidence and the ones that we do for are regulated by the agencies, um, but it is something that I personally am going to be watching the government and how they're going to further regulate and control the chemicals and substances used in cosmetics. So when in doubt, look for highly trusted brands that have a low number and known ingredients. Like we talked about with the cell phones, high energy or ionizing radiation can cause cancer if someone is exposed to a lot of it. This ionizing radiation can damage the cells and increase damage to DNA. We are naturally exposed to some of this radiation every day in small amounts, most commonly known from radon gas from the ground. The most common man-made ionizing radiation is from x-rays. There is some evidence that shows that there is a slight increase of risk of cancer for those who are exposed to x-rays at a high amount or high level. But at a low level, at a general level, know that there is not an increased risk. 
Now I know that may be a concern when you hear that, but know that x-rays and other imaging such as CT scans are extremely important to help diagnose illnesses such as cancer, and they are going to give off less radiation than someone would be naturally exposed to over time. And there are guidelines that are in place to make sure that everyone is exposed to a safe amount. Overall, the majority of individuals are exposed so minimally and the health risks of not having these scans to find illnesses, diagnose illnesses, or find cancer is going to put someone at a much higher risk of issues compared to having the scans themselves and having a little bit of radiation exposure. Forty plus years ago, this was a very real public concern, but no, you cannot catch cancer from someone else. Not only is it okay to be near or touch someone who has cancer, if it is a loved one, it is more important than anything that you give them that kind of support. There may be some confusion though with HPV or hepatitis B and C. These are viruses and they are contagious and they can lead to the development of cancer. They are usually developed or transmitted through sexual interaction or through infected needles. And hepatitis B and C are correlated with liver cancer and HPV is correlated with cervical cancer. It is best to just speak to your doctor about the vaccines available and screenings to protect yourself from these viruses. So those are the four myths for today. Again, if you have any other myths that you want to hear more about, be sure to comment those down below and subscribe to see when those videos come out. I will see you all next week for another video. Thanks everyone.